Please remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell to be notified of new videos and live streams. Alhamdulillah, he Nahmadu who and Astainu who and Astafiru who and Atuvile. When I would be lah him in Shururi and Fusina, women say ye at Amalina, my Yahdi Hilla who fell a modilla, where my Yudil fell a hadiella, where Shadwala Ila Hilla law, where do la Sharikala, where Shadwana Mohammed and Abduhu Rasulu, Sola law, Ali, he wala Ali, he toybin, or Tahirin was Abi Hil Mokarabin, a layo medin Mabad. Ibad Allah, Usiku, when I see Bitakwa law, he was tied, he fucked Fazal Mutakun. Ibad Allah. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to come out through the other end of Eid of Ramadan, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. After having observed training that, as we will see, is the training of, is akin to the ibadah of the malaika. And what comes tomorrow, inshallah, for us is Eid. So what, does, what is Eid? Eid is, literally means the return, that which returns. And... Istilahan, so technically it refers to a public celebration. And in Islam, there are only two. Two of these annual recurring public celebrations, and that is the Eid al-Fitr and the Eid al-Adha. Outside of these, call them what you like, there are those celebrations that are recognized in Islam and those that are not. But the two that are legislated, that are mashru' are only two, which is the uh, fitr wa adha. And the scholars are of different view what Eid, what it represents. Why was it called Eid? Why was a celebration, these two celebrations, labeled with the term Eid, the return? So from them are those who say because it is that which is recurring every year and in which the full rights return. So in Ramadan, we are forbidden the right of eating and drinking during an intimacy during the, the, the day. So those rights have returned now. Just like in uh, when we are those who are doing Hajj, when they are in Ihram, they cannot do certain things. And once they Eid enters, then they, those rights have returned to them. And another opinion is that it is a return to the, the asl, a return to our true nature, a return to that taqwa which is supposed to be the objective sought and insha'Allah by Allah's grace achieved during Ramadan and the, the Hajj as well. Uh, so a person is returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rekindling, getting in touch once more with the true purpose of their being, connected once more afresh, uh, reinvigorated with their connection with their Rabb. And these things we experience. These things are not theory. These things we uh, are undergoing ourselves have experienced during this month. So it is a return to the asl. And this asl, as, uh, this, asl this ibadah of uh, Ramadan, of fasting, is the ibadah that is most similar. Out of all the ibadah in Islam, the one which is most similar to the ibadah of the angels is siyam, is fasting, especially fasting Ramadan. Why? Because the ibadah of angels is ongoing. It is ceaseless, does not stop. Similarly, Ramadan is that which we are in ibadah, even though we're going to work, even though we're sleeping, even though we're, we're coming back, even though we're doing whatever it may be. It is all ibadah. It is ongoing. So it, it is a great... Um, it is a great... Uh, uh, training, a great uh, conditioning for us to resume and assume our rightful place in the order of creation as being the ones who carry Allah's nur with these angelic qualities. It is also, uh, so the, we all know the hadith that 
When a person fasts, له فرحتان. للصائم فرحتان. فرحة هنا يفطر وفرحة هنا يلقى ربه. For the person who 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 fasts are two types of happiness. The happiness at the moment of they break their fast, and a happiness that Allah reserves for when they meet Allah. This, by the way, some people may not recognize the significance of this. When we meet Allah is when we are being judged. Well, before how we go to heaven or hell is when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Now, inshallah, we meet him in a good way, inshallah. If there is a happiness for us at that moment, it means Allah is pleased with us. And if he is pleased with us, where are we going to go? Jannah or not? Subhanallah. Farah. For the sa'im. And that wasn't just Psalm Ramadan. That is for any sa'im. So you imagine 30 days of that psalm. And Eid is, uh, why is it also happy? Why is a person happy this day? Because they are, ha they are happy because shaitan has not had any role in that day on them. They have, you know, scuttled his plans. They have undone his work, right? We have come out of it saying, shaitan, our enemy, ha -ha, you didn't get me today. Right? So that is why they're also happy. They're also happy that they have been in this ibadah. So Eid, the day of Eid, is multiplied by a minimum of 30 happinesses. Why? Because 30 days we have, well, 29 or th actually always 30. Even if it is 29 days, it is always 30 happiness because the Prophet ﷺ says two months, the days will never be uh, reduced, will always be complete. Uh, the two, the Eid, uh, the Ramadan, and uh, the Hijjah. These two months, even though if it's 29 days, the Ajr, the reward, it will always be 30. Okay. So this means that it is legislated. Eid is where we are commanded to be happy. To be happy on that day to celebrate it is ibadah. Just like in Ramadan, in Siyam, the ibadah is to withhold, to stop. And as we see during the itikaf is to be isolated. That is ibadah. Isolate from dunya, even from your general socialization. Okay, socializing. That is the ibadah of Ramadan. But the ibadah of Eid is different. The ibadah of Eid, of Eid is to eat. And to socialize. It is not to fast. It's haram to fast on Eid day. The ibadah of Eid is to eat. Of course, in moderation. Of course, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> but it is to eat. It is not to isolate yourselves and ignore from people. No, it is to visit each other. It is to be happy. This is commanded. This is what is expected. Right? And... Allahumma salli sallam Muhammad sallam. Um, of which, fi ma akhrajahu Imam Nasa'i rahmatullah alayhi an Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu qal, kana li ahli al-jahiliya yawmani fi kulli sanatin yala'abuna fi hima. Falamma qadima al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Madina taqal, kana lakum yawmani tala'abuna fi hima. فَأَبْدَلَكُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَانِ أَبْدَلَكُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَانِ أَبْدَلَكُمُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَانِ خَيْرًا مِنْهُمَا يَوْمَ الْفِطْرِ وَيَوْمَ الْعِيدِ Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, oh, he says that in the time prior to Islam, there were two days in the year that there used to be a day of happiness, a day of celebration. And when the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, he says that you used to have two days in the year that you used to make merry, celebrate and whatnot. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has replaced those two days with days that are better than those two days, which is the day of Eid al-Fitr and the day of Eid al-Adha. So we're supposed to be happy, you're supposed to make merry, etc. And in, in Salat al-Eid, there are certain rulings. 
Firstly, when a, that it is preferable to pray outside of the masjid, in a field, in a park, in what a hall, it is preferable. Okay, that is the better. And there is no sunnah before Eid Salat. And so when you enter the hall, do not pray two rakats. That is not the sunnah. It's a mistake. And there is no sunnah after the Eid Salat. There is no sunnah before. There is no sunnah after. And that is what is reported by Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullah Ali, and Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kharaja yawm al fitr, fasalla rak'atain, lam yusalli qablahuma, wala ba'dahuma, wa ma'ahu bilal. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exited, he came out on the day of Eid and he prayed two rakats. The two rakats of Eid, the, 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 the Reed Salat. He did not pray before it, nor did he pray after it. So there is no sunnah before the Eid Salat, nor is there sunnah afterwards. So if you pray it, that is not good. It is better not to pray it. Why? Because not to pray is to follow the path of the Prophet ﷺ, and his path is always the best path. And his path is always the one with the most reward. His path is always the one most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the, and the takbir, oh, and who else comes to, comes to Eid? Those who are minster in their menses, the female who are in their period of the month, they come to Eid Salat. And the ones who would have a typical uh, reason to isolate, it's it for health reasons, you know, a shara'i reason. They also come to Salat al Eid. Fima akhrajuha Muslim, Rahmatullahi alayhi, and Umi Atiyah radiallahu anhu, Qalat, Amrana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Yukhrijna fil adha wal fitri, al awatika wal huyada wa the watil huduri, fa amma al huyada, fa yata zilna salata, wa yashadna al khair, wa da'watul muslimin. So, Umar uh, says, the Prophet ﷺ commanded us, the, the females, that on the day of Eid and Eid al-Adha, for the young to come out to join the Eid, and those who are in their, in their monthly period, and those who have been isolated from people. As for the ones who are in their menses, they do not join the same area of Salat. So where we pray, they do not sit there. They sit at the chairs at the back, all right, wherever it may be, but not in the area of prayer per se. And they are there to witness the goodness, the takbirat, and they are there to witness the da'wah, the khutbah. Right? So they should be there. This was a command from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then she says, Kultu Ya Rasulullah, Ihdana la yakuna la hajil babun. So the Prophet ﷺ says, So Umar says to the Prophet ﷺ, he says that sometimes some of us, the ladies, do not have the garment to cover themselves, to cover themselves fully, an outer garment. So they have a private thing, but not a garment for the public. Right? So that indicating the how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Sahabis and the Sahabiyat. Radiallahu anhunna wa arda. The so the Prophet says, You let the, each other share each other's garments. You have extra, give her. In order to support each other to come to Salat al-Eid. Salat al-Eid is where the community the, that sense of unity, that sense of brotherhood and sisterhood, an opportunity for us to interact where we are commanded to be happy. We are supposed to be happy, we are supposed to make fun, we are supposed to enjoy. So let us enjoy together, not to come. Stern faces, poker faces, whatever faces, we want the Islamic faces of happy smiles. Right? That is also part of the Eid Salat. And the takbiras, they for Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha are different. So for Eid al-Fitr, the takbir starts at Maghrib tonight, the Maghrib or the night of Eid, okay? And finishes when the Imam comes to do the khutbah. There is no takbiras for Eid al-Fitr after the Salat al-Eid. 
or after the khutbah al Eid. There's no takbiras. There's no takbiras after the Hur or Asr. Not on. Not for Eid al-Fitr. For Eid al-Adha, that is also termed Eid al-Kabir. Why? Because the takbiras go on until the end of the Ayyam al-Tashriq. Until the end of slaughtering. Okay? So once the third day is finished, then the takbiras are finished. So that's different. So there's no takbiras after the, 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 the khutbah al-Eid. But before, from Maghrib tonight, insha'Allah, say it at your homes, in your cars, in the streets, in the markets, in the public, in the private, with yourself, with your family, after Salat, before Salat, all the time. And the Prophet wasallam, the sunnah of Eid is to also wear the, the new clothes. And just like in Juma. The better is to wear white, even if it is not new. In Eid is different. In Eid, it is better to wear new, even if it is not white. So wear new. You are supposed to honor the day at Allah on it. We're supposed to celebrate the day. So don't wear your everyday clothes to Eid. If you have clothes that are not everyday, wear them. Without, of course being excessive and without of course uh, and what with of course observing the regulations of islam especially for our sisters the regulations of islam for covering themselves properly inshallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as you know sisters uh, as i know you're listening for and for the for our wives and our daughters and our sisters etc remember that every time they wear hijab it is ibadah because they are observing a command of Islam. So whenever they wear it, they are being blessed. At home, whatever it is. So even though it might be difficult for some, it is of great reward that you will come to thank Allah for one day. Okay. Uh, in terms of the celebration. In terms of how we do Eid. The Eid Salat. The Eid Salat, there are two formats, two major formats. One is the Jumhur. So the Malikis, the Shafi'is, and the Hanbalis. The most of, I think most of you will know the Hanafis, not this Jumhur. The Jumhur is to do six takbiras after takbiratul ihram in the first raka'ah. So in total, seven takbiras. The Allahu Akbar for entering into salat, and then six takbiras. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. There is nothing legislated to say between the takbiras. So Allahu Akbar, hand down. So the first Allahu Akbar, like this. That's the takbiratul ihram. The second takbira. Allahu Akbar, hands to your side. And the last takbirah, which would in total be the seventh for the first rak'ah, hands again. All right? If you want to say, Subhanahu alhamdulillah, wal ilaha wa Allahu Akbar, what? Alhamdulillah, bas. All right? But there's nothing legislated specifically. As for the second rak'ah, when you've come up from sujood, you will do the takbirat al-intiqal, Allahu Akbar, from coming up from sujood. Yeah? So you're standing now, and then there will be five takbiras. Five takbiras, you go up and you do your ruku and everything like normal. That is the jumhur. For the one that is practiced here is the Hanafi. And so that is the takbira, so it's four and four. Right? Uh, why four? The takbirat al ihram, okay, the first one, and then three takbiras. So in total, four. You do your first rak'ah, you come up, then you will pray your second rak'ah without the takbiras in the beginning. But before we go into ruku, you will do three takbiras. Why did I say it was four? Because takbirat intiqal to come up. So it's three and three. That is the Hanafi approach. And inshallah, uh, there is actually more approaches, but alhamdulillah, inshallah, that is what is well known to us. So please do not be confused uh, regarding the, the salat. And in the Eid, the salat comes before the khutbah. Okay? The salat comes before the khutbah, as we all know. And the time for, uh, and, the prophet, and the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam is the preferable, what is mo better in reward, greater in reward, is to walk. Even today, with our cars, it is better to walk and to arrive early. Why walk? Because the Prophet said it's better to walk. 
<laughs> and to come one way, so you go to, you come one direction to the place where we're going to pray, which is Karara, as you all know. If you don't know, you should get to know. There's a the signs up there. And when you go home, go a different way. Why do you go a different way? It's the same reason why when we pray sunnah, we move a little bit from one sunnah to another. Why? So that the ground will witness for us on the day of judgment. So this part of the musalla will witness for us. We prayed here. This part here will witness for us. We pray there. Just like the route we came one way to the musalla will witness. They came to do ibadah. And on the way back, a different part of the ground will witness that they did ibadah. So that is also the sunnah. So meaning that when you park, how, is that, how does that translate to our times? So when you park, park the furthest away. Park, not here, double parking, etc. <laughs> park the furthest away. Walk two minutes, two minutes. Do a hundred steps, two hundred steps. The more, the better. Okay. So the ones who are really the, the winners is the one who parks further away, not the one who parks closest. Okay. Uh, so these are some of the ahkamul eid. Akulu ma tasmaun wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu fa ya fawz lil mustaghfirin wa ya najat li ta'ibin. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam wa rasul al-ameen Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd Ibadullah As we mentioned last night Perhaps At least once At least, least once Hopefully the whole month And even before the month And after the month inshallah Is that A person has felt Allah close to them That a person has felt Allah near them Connected, present, we present with him, him present with us. That is what was supposed to be achieved in Ramadan. That is taqwa. That is piety. That is Islam. That is its substance. That is its fruit. That is its sweetness. That is its core, that is its energy, that is its life. With that feeling, you feel that something exists here. You don't feel empty without it. And you feel, you feel that your creator is connected with you. You feel strong. You do not feel alone. You do not feel abandoned. You do not feel lost. You do not feel confused. That is Iman. That, as we said yesterday, of course, at different levels, obviously, that is that substance which was with the Prophet ﷺ. That is that substance which were with the Sahaba. That is what pushes somebody to live for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what pushes somebody to regulate their behavior to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That presence is always there, as Allah is always there. The issue is that we lose the connection. Why? Because we forget to please Allah, or that we choose to ignore Allah's rules. And we choose to listen to the sweet, sweet whispers of the devil. And the shaitan is coming. And the shaitan, what does he target? He targets that substance. It is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us three times, uh, or, or th invoking three of his names in the very final thing in his book. The very last thing Allah wanted to say to us in the Quran before he finished it. And he's never speaking to our human beings again. The very last thing, the thing that he wants you to remember. We know we have to follow Islam. We know we have to follow his path, the Sirat al Mustaqim, and the method to do so. Kul a'udhu bi Rabbin nas, Malikin nas, Ilahin nas, Min Sharril waswasil. Khannas, the one who is lingering, the wiswas, the sweetness, the one who is hunting us, the one who is always about. Uh, where is he? Waswis? 
Fisodurinas in the hearts of people. There, this thing that we feel now, the purity of it, the strength of it, the force of it, the sweetness of it, the warmth of it, the comfort of it. Preserve it through salat, through siyam, through qiyam, through sadaqah, through zakat, obviously, through every act pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and preserve it by staying away from everything that is haram. But remember, the step before haram is makruh. The step before haram, what is between halal and haram is makruh. So the person who always lives in makruh is skirting the haram. Do not jeopardize the greatest gift that Allah has given us. Not only has he chosen us to be Muslim, he has allowed us to taste the sweetness of what it means to be Muslim. Of which, and this is one of the most beautiful things I read. I read it years and years, maybe 30 years ago. Oh, I'm, not, not that, I'm not that old. All right. uh, 22 years ago. And this was in Majmul Fatawa li, li Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullah alayhi. And he says that in dunya there is a jannah. And that whosoever enters that jannah here will enter jannah in the next life. And whosoever does not enter jannah, this, this jannah here in dunya, will not enter the jannah in the next. And that jannah is that serenity, that sakina, that peace, that feeling that you feel, insha'Allah. So take good tidings that insha'Allah, we have done at least something pleasing to Allah. At least something. And that if we have done something pleasing to Allah, then inshallah we have more than just an atom's weight of iman. And inshallah as a result of Allah's kindness, inshallah we will enter Jannah. Mm. Uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not uh, protect us from forgetting Protect us from being so seduced by the busyness of this world that we forget the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrench this iman and as he has gifted it to us, never take it from us. Ibadullah inna Allah amara bi amrin bada fihi bi nafsi wa thana bi mala ikatihi musabihi nabi kutsi fakal inna Allah wa mala ikatuhu yusallu ala ala nabi ya ayuhaladina amunu sallu alihi wa salimu taslima Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala sayyidina Muhammad kama salli ala sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina Muhammad kama barak ala sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ala sayyidina Ibrahim fil alamina inna kahamidun majid Rabbana la tuakhidna ina sina au akhtana Rabbana la tahmil alayna isran kama hamiltuhu ala lidina min qawli ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به وأفوانا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين اللهم اجعل في قلبنا قلوبنا نورا في أسماعنا نورا وفي أبصارنا نورا ومن أمامنا نور ومن فوقنا نور ومن تحتنا نور وعن يميننا نور ومن شمالنا ومن خلفنا نور ومن موتنا نورا Ya Allah, grant us your light in our hearts, your light in our tongue, your light in our faces, your light in our being, your light in front of us and behind us, on the right of us, on the left of us, above us and beneath us, and grant us your light. Ya Allah, allow us to, be, to return to you with those actions that are pleasing to you. Allow us, as you have, do not deny us that promise that whosoever fasts has a happiness when they break their fast and a happiness that when we return to you. Ya Allah, allow you to please be happy with us in dunya and akhirah. Ya Allah, please protect us from those actions that deserve your wrath, your anger. Forgive us the sins that have passed. Allow us to, in what remains of this blessed month, do not deny us the great rewards of it. And as we exit it, allow that gift that you have given us not to be taken away from us. Grant us the courage, the strength, the determination, the consistency to preserve your gift in us. And allow and grant us more and more of your gifts for which you are there. they are inexhaustible. Ya Allah, we ask of you every goodness that your beloved Prophet wasallam asked. And we seek from you the protection from every evil for which the Prophet ﷺ sought protection from. 
and we ask of you to alleviate the burdens, the hardships, the sorrow, the, the difficulties, the oppression of every believer who is suffering in this world. Allow the Muslims to unite in a way that is pleasing to you and by way that others who are isolated do not feel isolated from their fellow brothers and sisters in Islam. Allow our khair, allow our goodness to reach them, their goodness for which you have blessed us. Allow, grant them your happiness in their hearts and deliver us and deliver them from the evils and of the wicked. Ibadallah, Ibadallah, Oh, Ibadallah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, brother and sister in Islam, so sorry, my English is not good, you know. So I will uh, speak uh, in Arabic. Uh, our Imam, Imam Shafiq, will uh, translate. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a huda ma ba'd. Al ikhwat wal akhwat fillah, laqad madad. يوم تل اليوم الأسبوع تل الأسبوع والآن خلصنا التراويح وخلصنا ال بعد قليل سنخلص الصوم وسنكون إن شاء الله في عيد الفطر وهذا لا نشعر فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يتقبل من رمضان يتقبل من الصيام يتقبل من القيام. My respected brothers and sisters. Alhamdulillah, we, the days have passed during Ramadan and the weeks have passed and now the month and we have completed the Qur'an in Taraweeh and there is only a few hours left in, of fasting and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this ibadah. Since the day I came here, I don't remember the day of the day. The important thing is that these days, the happy days and these days, the good days, وأنا تقيت بأناس جيدين ممتازين وأنا مرتاح هنا الحمد لله سعيد جدا ب ما شاء الله يعني مقابلة الإخوة والأخوات هنا خاصة نحن الآن في شهر رمضان وقريب من شوال فأنا حقيقة أريد أن أقول يعني شكرا جزيلا وأقول لكم جميعا جزاكم الله خير الجزاء وجزاكم الجنة وجزاكم الله الجنة ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى كما جمعنا في هذا المكان المبارك في هذا المسجد وفي هذا الاتحاد المبارك إن شاء الله جمعنا كذلك إن شاء الله في الفردوس عامين. From the moment I arrived, I have been met with warmth and have been made to feel welcome. And not a moment has there been except that I have felt that way. And it has been my great pleasure to have been introduced and to have met so many wonderful people along the way. And uh, I would like to say for the, this warmth, thank you very much or Jazakumullah khair. And then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also grant you the reward of Jannah. And that as he has gathered us in this blessed place in this blessed month, that we will also be united in the gathering of the blessed gathering, gathering with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahi, these words that I was able to give you, these are not a mistake. And we are in Arabic, we call it a mistake. But these words, these words, I mean, in fact, I will be from the heart. 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 وأنا الحمد لله قبل أن أتي هنا أصلا وأنا لا أعرف عن هذا المسجد وعن هذا الاتحاد ولا سليم مع أي معلومة لكن قال لي صديقي الذي هو يمسك الجمعية الخيرية دون في الدعفاء في سيدني قال لي أن هذا المسجد مسجد كبير وفيه أناس من مختلف البلدان من مصر ومن فلسطين ومن الأردن ومن من آسيا ومن باكستان بنغلاديش هندية فيجي أي مكان ف 
لما وجدت هنا أناسا ما شاء الله محترمين جدا لذلك هذه الكلمات دائما يعني أؤكد لكم أن هذه الكلمات ليس المجاملة وإنما أتت من قلبي يعني. These words are not mere niceties that I say by way of formalities but they are a genuine expression of my heart. When I, before coming here, I had no information about this masjid and about this community and nor uh, except that it is a big masjid well, for our standards <laughs> uh, and that it is comprised of people from every nation or from numerous nations and it has been his great pleasure to have been interacting with people from all over the world who have interacted with respect and decorum uh, and uh, this is a expression of the genuineness of my gratitude for uh, the way that he has been i have been received rubbama laysa kullukum yani ya'rif ismi fa ana akhukum fi Allah shams al fajr na'am ana nasit a'rifukum perhaps not all of you know my name i forgot to mention my name is shams al fajr na'am which is the sun or the dawn of the morning the light of the morning Now when I did to me in Indonesia, why did I talk about the Arabic? Because I was 14 years old. I was studying in the University of the Azhar Sharif. I finished the college and finished the master's degree there in Egypt. That's why I always say that this is not a second country. I am speaking in Arabic because I spent 14 years in Egypt in Azhar. Uh, I believe uh, this is me adding where he completed his master's in the College of Hadith. which is no small feat for the Azhad standard and for that reason he is speaking in the Arabic language khasatan ana aqif huna al-an urid aqul lakum shukran jazilan wa khasatan li imamina I want to I would like to I'm sure he can translate yeah because Uh, for our Imam, Dr. Imam Shafiq, uh, he is our leader here. He uh, give us everything here, uh, Islam study, Tafsir, Hadith, uh, Fiqh, everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him, bless uh, uh, his family, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make uh, everything for him easy, inshallah. Yeah. So that's why, I'm so sorry, this, my English is not good. Oh. Uh, <laughs> can, I, can I say a few words, Brother Shamsul? Uh, on behalf of the masjid, above yeah. of Southport, above of Gokos, we would like to thank you very much from the bottom of our heart yeah. for your presence here, yeah. for the sacrifices that you have, the yeah. many sacrifices that you have made yeah. in order to be with us. We have enjoyed every moment of your presence here, and we have enjoyed every oh. mm. syllable of your tilawa. You have helped Allah us connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's Qur'an to focus, to fall in love with it. And we are praying that you will be with us consistently inshallah. over the years to come, inshallah. Inshallah. And this is not the last one. And I want to say thank you very much to brother Naseem. Brother Naseem, inshallah, he is a man. If not, he will be a man. And the things that are many in this masjid. فهذا الذي فهذا الرجل الذي كان يقيم بهذا فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى كذلك أن يبارك في حياته. I would also like to thank our respected brother Nasim by for the many efforts that he has exhausted not only in Ramadan but outside of Ramadan and without whom it would have been a very difficult time being here. So may Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant him may Allah سبحانه وتعالى grant him the best of rewards. كذلك لأخينا لا أقول أخينا أصلا لهذا كأنه جدي كأنه أبي و... لا أنا أقول هذا الكلام ليس ك... لأنه إندونيسيا من إندونيسيا وأنا من إندونيسيا لا لأنه ما شاء الله هو قدم كل شيء هنا وترك شغله هو أصلا لم, لم يستطن يشتغل لأنه كبير سن هو ضعيف هو ضعيف جسميا لكن هو قوي روحيا جدنا برادر حمدي 
نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يقويه نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك في حياته ويبارك في أسرته وأهله ونسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يكثر أمثاله I would also like to make special thanks to my brother uh, or my father I won't say grandfather, my father uh, uh, even though he's from the same country he is uh, and he may be weak physically he is strong spiritually and that spiritual strength is what has keeps him going and doing more than any strong abled person in this community so you think you're strong i don't think so so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless him uh, ret- keep him in good health uh, bless his family and reward him abundantly kadhalika qul shukran jazilan li datu mashallah datu daiman daiman qaddam lana ashya kathira jiddan sa'adana kathira al iftar sa'adana lil lis sahur hatta kullu yawm ba'da al ba'da tarawih wa ba'da al ba'da qiyam هو يعطي لنا طعام خاصا هو يعرف انني اندونيسي اندونيسي يحب الطعام اندونيسيا لذلك قدم لي طعام اندونيسي وان كنت دائما يعني I'd like to make special thanks to our respected Dato Aziz for making an effort to uh, invite me out and to also provide me with uh, Indonesian Malaysian delicacies even though their food was available in abundance it did mean something uh, very special so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant him that beautiful consideration as he has given that consideration to his servants in dunya kadhalika aqul lakum shukran jazilan li ayy ahad alladhi sa'adani wa qaddama li ashya ba'd ba'd minkum yani yamshi bi ila ayy makan ila beach ila mountain ila ayy makan ka أخينا نور فضلي كذلك الإخوة والأخوات الإخوان والأخوات الذين دائما يطبخون كل يوم للإفطار والاستحور والله حتى أنا لا أستطيع يعني أتصور كيف هو ترك شغله ترك أهله والإخوة كذلك تركت أهله تركت زوجها في البيت وتأتي هنا وتطبخ لجميع ال حاضرين والجميع من يريد يفطر هنا فنسال الله سبحانه وتعالى ان يجزيكم خير الجزاء في هذه في هذه الدنيا وكذلك في الاخره اللهم امين and i would like to also thank every single person who has uh, made an effort to get to know me made an effort to take me out sometimes to the beach sometimes to the mountains and elsewhere to the gardens and i'd like to thank uh, the sisters for the continuous sacrifices to cook not only for myself but for the entire community and for i cannot imagine the sacrifices that they have made from leaving their families leaving their work leaving their husbands leaving their spouses in order to serve this religion so i again i thank everybody from the bottom of my heart to that allah may subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them with the greatest of all rewards <laughs> جميع اسمائكم لكن هذا ليس يعني يقل يقل شعوري ب بما قدمتم لي ف سامحوا لي لا استطيع ان اقول جميع اسمائكم ما شاء الله هنا كذلك دكتور اسلام كل من قدم اشياء هنا واقول لكم شكرا جزيلا وجزاكم الله خيرا Uh, I would like I, can, I am not in a position to recall all the names of everybody who has uh, contributed in one way or another but that I would like to thank them nevertheless uh, no. I mean, inshallah. It's all uh, from Allah, brother. كذلك أنا سأغادر هذا المكان إن شاء الله يوم الأحد في الصباح يوم الأحد في الصباح. 
نسأل منكم الدعاء وربما خلال هذا الشهر رمضان لو وجدتم مني خطأ أو تقصيرا أو أي شيء فعمدا أو غير عمد فأطلب منكم سماحة فسامحوني كل شيء um, I am departing on Sunday morning and if at any point in my residence here that I have wronged anybody or slighted anybody knowingly or unknowingly please pardon me and forgive me وهذا ليس المرة الأولى أنا أتي في أستراليا وهذا الرابع مرة الثلاثة الأولى أنا كنت في في آل سبرين فلكن هذا الاتحاد ما شاء الله هذا الاتحاد اتحاد كبير اتحاد فيه أخوة فأنا دائما أدعو الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يضع في هذا الاتحاد بركة إن شاء الله This is the fourth time that I've come to Australia with the three previous times being in Alice Springs. But this time, it's a bigger gathering and there is a clear presence of Islamic Brotherhood. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always to instill and to preserve that barakah in the community. التي تتحرك في المجال الاجتماعي وفي الأخلاق وفي الدين وهي الجمعية ضم الدوافة من إندونيسيا وهذه الجمعية خاصة في هذه السنة ترسل تبعث لم يقل من عشرين دعاة وأساتذة وإمة في أنحاء العالم وخاصة هنا في أستراليا أربع أساتذة أو أربع دعاة ومنهم أنا هنا في جولكوست وهذا عن طريق الدومبيت دوفا إندونيسيا I would like to acknowledge that I, my presence here was facilitated by the organization Dompet Dua from Indonesia, which this year alone has sent no less than 20 people across the world in order to spread da'wah and to lead people in salat. And here in Australia, there are four people, myself, myself. support for this Dompet Dua whom Ishtarao. البيتا لتحفيظ القرآن وكذلك وكذلك للدروس الإسلامية أسبوعيا أو وكذلك يوميا شهريا في سيدني وهم دفعوا المبلغ تقريبا ربعمية دولار وتبقى تقريبا ثلاثمية دولار نعم. So I would like to ask your du'a, your du'a and your support for this organization, Dompet Dua which have purchased a building in Sydney for Tahfiz al-Quran and for the education of Islam, for which they have already paid 400,000 and there's a remaining three or 400,000 left. So please support that organization as well. Ma'adhiratan ala al-itala wa ana qul lakum ana uhibbukum fi Allah. أنا أحبكم في الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Please excuse me for the lengthiness of my submission and I love you for the sake of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله ربي والإسلام ديني ومحمد رسول الله.